996 uh, no, poets for change to go, <laughs> and, uh, and our first guest must count for several hundred of those at least. Um, oh, <laughs> Tineke van der Eken is a Belgian-born trilingual writer who lived for many years in remote parts of the world, mainly Africa. She has had short stories published in Indigo and Dreamweaver, and her poetry appeared for the first time last year in Creatrix. Last year, was it? Oh. Um, her book, Café Dafric, is over here and you can buy copies. Uh, she's got one special today. Um, it, it's a travel of memoir about a restaurant in Zambia. Uh, Tineke trained in performing poetry in Belgium, and she likes working with French and other languages, which she does very successfully, if you've never heard any of her work before. Um, I, it, this is going to be great. Tineke Van Eken. Van Der Eken. I always get that wrong. My apologies. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here in, in Perth Poetry Club and especially um, at the event for 100,000 Poets for Change. Um, and I'm going to start today with a poem uh, that really was the inspiration for me to go and study criminology and pursue social justice as, um, as a career, really, and for life. Um, the poem is, was, uh, is based on uh, the text written by Jacques Prévert. He wrote it in 1945, and it was published only in 72. Um, and he called it um, La Grasse Matinée. Um, I've used some of his words, most of his words, and transcreated it into a text that is hopefully understandable for all. I call it Coffee and Cream. Il est terrible. It's brutal. The little noise of eggshell crushing on a metal counter. It's a brutal noise when it rumbles through the memory of a man who is hungry. Il est terrible. Le petit bruit de l'œuf dur cassé sur un comptoir d'étain. Il est terrible ce bruit quand il remue dans la tête de l'homme qui a faim. Elle est terrible aussi, la tête de l'homme, la tête de l'homme qui a faim. He watches his image in high street shop windows, his face the color of dust, une tête couleur de poussière. Mais ce n'est pas sa tête pourtant qu'il regarde in the shop windows at chez Potin. He couldn't care less about his own head. Il songe, he dreams, il imagine une autre tête, une tête de veau, par exemple, avec une sauce de vinaigre, ou une tête de n'importe quoi qui se mange, or a head of whatever is edible. Et il remue doucement la mâchoire, doucement. Slowly he moves his chin, and he grinds his teeth, doucement. Because the world laughs at his face. Et il ne peut rien contre le monde. There is nothing he can do about that. Et il compte sur ses doigts. Un, deux, trois. Un, deux, trois. It's been three days without food. And he's been telling himself, ça ne peut pas durer. Ça dure trois jours, trois nuits, sans manger, without food. And behind those shop windows, ses pâtés, ses bouteilles, ses conserves, bottles, preserves, conserves, Dead fish protected by tin, tins protected by glass, glass protected by security, security protected by fear. Que la barricade pour six malheureux sardines, all those barriers for six unfortunate sardines. A bit further on, there's the bistro, <coughs> café crème, croissant chaud, long titube, the man staggers. And inside his head, un brouillard de mots, a mist of words, sardines to eat, boiled egg, croissant chaud, coffee and rum, coffee and cream, café crème, café cream, arrosé sang, drenched in blood. Un homme très estimé dans son quartier a été égorgé en plein jour. A man, well respected in his neighborhood, had his throat slit in broad daylight. The murderer, a vagabond, got away with two francs. Soit, un café arrosé, coffee with rum, 70 cents, two pieces of bread with butter, and a 25 cent tip for the waiter. 
il est terrible. Le petit bruit de l'œuf dur cassé sur un comptoir d'étain. Il est terrible ce bruit quand il remue dans la mémoire de l'homme qui a faim. I lived in Burundi in the, 19, in the early 1990s and uh, Burundi is close to Rwanda, in Central Africa. And the national language in Burundi is Kirundi. So I made an effort to learn Kirundi. Uh, I didn't get much further than a few words, but I did use some of the Kirundi in this poem, which um, sort of um, tells the atmosphere of the country at the time. You will know that in the early 90s in Central Africa, there was, the region was very unstable, and um, leading up to uh, the horrible things that happened in 1994 in Rwanda. Burundi, in Burundi, there were similar things uh, brewing, and uh, you might find some of that in this poem. So it's about war and peace. I call it poem for Seraphim. Ugiye he, amahoro, umusungu. Ugiye he, where are you going, you ask. Kuisoka, I say, I'm going to the market. You laugh when I can't get the tone right, when I don't say isoka, but isoka, which means source, like the source of the Nile. Namahoro is their peace. People greet as we walk past the shiny new election billboards. K children giggle and call me umuzungu. You've told me it's the word for white person. It means someone you only see going past, like explorers and slave merchants, colonials and post-colonial aid workers in cars. I guess the word has not lost its meaning. <laughs> We stop to look at the newest wax hollandais, latest fashion prints from Congo, while local pioneer wraps in green, red, and yellow parade by. We work our way past rickety stalls made of tired bamboo, bright orange palm oil in bottles and rice in any quaint quantity you can imagine, and beans, beans, and more beans. Amahoro ni mesa. Yes, there is peace, all is good. This market is busy like an anthill. We buy fish, capitaine, Nile perch, with your, but your kings in, live in the green hills, you say. Never see Lake Tanganyika for fear of death. You don't greet the Batwa vendor. Then one word stirs the mound, événement, 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 like bushfire it spreads, events. How very Burundian of you, this euphemism for ethnic killings. As vendors pack and traffic hoots and beeps and tries to race past, the crowd on the market thins, the anthills about to be deserted. We follow the crowds away from the market, across the street and past Greek and Belgian shops, remnants of colonial past, where fear empties the shelves and competes for sugar, rice, flour and tea and beans, beans and more beans. Survival food, while the city pretends to be asleep for days. Namahoro is, no, there is no peace. There is fear in your voice. Don't worry, I say. We are here to bring peace. See, elections are coming. Multi-party democracy. You'll win. Everyone will win. Amahoro. You shake your head. You don't know this country, you say. And I cannot wipe the fear from your almond spiced eyes. What happens next? Only the tall grass on the hills can tell. Where are you going? Umuzungu, the one who's always on the move. Namahoro, is there peace? Amahoro, Umuzungu, Ukiyehe. And the third and last poem I'll do here is on language. I come from Belgium. We have three national languages in Belgium and a lot more you hear on the streets. So it's great to have that you know, multilingual environment. And um, one of our, uh, our own uh, songwriters and poets is Jacques Brel. And he loved, he, he was from the Fr south, so he spoke French as a mother tongue, but he loved the north because it has the sea. And um, he had this love-hate relationship with it because of you know, the Flemish and Volume conflict and all of that. But anyway, he wrote this poem. 
um, in two languages. He wrote it in French and he wrote it in Flemish. And I've tried to incorporate both and added English so you will understand. So this is on language. I have no language, no words like wrath or gag or hurl. My imagination doesn't stretch to finding images like the Knights Vernix or Cambert Hollow or even desolate winds. I have no language in this place. Avec la mer du Nord pour dernier terrain vague et des vagues de dunes pour arrêter les vagues. As long as you don't understand, we share, we have no language. Wanneer de Noordzee koppig breekt aan hoge duinen en witte vlokken schuim uiteenslaan op de kruin. Wanneer de Noordse bloed beukt op een zwart basalt en over dijk en duin de grijze leven valt. Wanneer bij eb het strand woest is als een woestijn en vlakke westerende gieren van penijn. Dan krakt mijn land, mijn vlakke land. Mon plappé. My flat country doesn't sound quite the same. Avec un ciel si bas qu'un canal s'est perdu. Avec un ciel si bas qu'il fait l'humilité. Avec un ciel si gris qu'un canal s'est pendu. Avec un ciel si gris qu'il faut lui pardonner. Do you get the sense of the low skies grazing the water? How their grayness suspends the waterways, begs us for pardon, teaches us humility. In Flanders, you know, it's the northern wind that steals your breath and decimates plains, and the southern sun that makes the water shine. In my flat country, mon plat pays. Wanneer de schelde blinkt in zuidelijke zon, en elke Vlaamse vrouw van ons in zon Japon, Quand la plaine est fumante et tremble sous juillet, when in summer the fields shimmer with smoke and the wind laughs in the plains of wit, quand le vent est au rire, quand le vent est au blé, quand le vent est au sud, écoutez le chanter. Un yacht, mes lentes, mon plat pays, sings my flat land, hears my language. You can write it, you can. How do you want to enjoy that? I'm going to that all the best things come from Belgium. <laughs>